We have not had the privilege of meeting just yet. My name is Daniel Groves, and I have the incredible honor of serving here on the team. And I'm just grateful to be hanging out with y'all this weekend. Pastor Jeremy brought up an incredible word last week. How many of you guys were with us last week? All I want for Christmas is peace. And we're actually gonna continue the conversation and talk more about peace this weekend as well. Before we jump in and do anything else, can we honor our pastors? Can we honor Pastor Jeremy Jennifer Foster for leading so strong? Love you. And uh, this week, say this week, I have a couple quick announcements. I need everybody to grab this. This week, come on, say it one more time. This week, uh, we have our Christmas of Hope City services happening here at West Houston and at Cinco and at Woodlands on the 23rd and 24th. And uh, you're gonna wanna be a part. It's going to be amazing. We have an incredible time. It's a time to gather as family, uh, about an hour long so you can show up. Let's do life together, celebrate our, our incredible King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and it's going to be an amazing week. So that's happening on the 23rd and the 24th. But next weekend, say next weekend, uh, we will not be here. So if you show up, it's just gonna be you. So you can pray, you can walk around the building and all that fun stuff. Uh, but we're doing an online-only experience next weekend so that y'all can sleep in, hang out with your family, stay in your Snuggie, eat leftovers, and join us as a family. Go to hopecity.com slash live. You can tune in next weekend. And I'm fired up about next weekend as well as we close out 2021 and we enter into what we believe is gonna be the best year of our life, 2022. How many guys are filled with audacious faith? So I was telling my wife last night, I felt like this was kind of brand new material. I was really excited about a, a phrase that I think I've coined. If you've heard it said like this before, you're wrong. This is fresh material. Uh, I'm giving this to you as a gift uh, for Christmas. You can put on a t-shirt or a hat or a bumper sticker. But I coined this phrase for this Christmas as Jesus is the reason for the season. It's, uh, <laughs> it's brand new. If you guys, some of you guys are like, I think I've heard that before. Just Google it. Okay. Uh, okay, if you uh, have been in any services with me before, you know your boy likes acronyms, and we're talking about peace. We're going to continue talking about peace, uh, continue uh, from last week where Pastor Jeremy broke it down so eloquently, but this week we're going to continue to unpack it. I love the acronym of the word peace, and it says this, placing expectation and confidence eternally. Placing expectation and confidence eternally. Peace sustains us when we recognize that all of this, this life, finances, family, climate, the pressure of all of this is on God, not on us. Our responsibility is to simply draw near to him. James 4, 8 literally says it this way, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So again, when we draw near to him and we obey him, shape our character around his will, he will take care of everything else. Peace is placing expectation and confidence eternally. An eternal mindset relinquishes control so that God can be God and we don't have to fail at trying to be. How many of you guys are fixers? Wave at me if you're a fixer. How many of y'all have control issues? Like you're like, you're not gonna control me. I'm not lifting my head. No, but you're a fixer. Like you're like, get out of the way. Let me fix it. Uh, I realized uh, 20 years of ministry, 17 years married, four kids later, most of the time, if I pinpoint it back, areas of my life where I feel like maybe I didn't have peace or something was robbing me of my peace, I realized, oh, I got in the way. I tried to handle it in my own strength. There's a verse that we go to a lot here at Hope City. It's John chapter three, verse 30. It says, he must become greater. I must become less. See, when I tried to fix everything and handle everything and navigate everything in my own strength, it robbed me of my peace, but there is freedom and wholeness and completeness in our lives when we recognize that true and genuine peace, the peace Pastor Jeremy broke down last week, the peace we're talking about today only comes from Jesus. How many of y'all are grateful that there's a gift that Jesus wants to give us that's not peace that the world gives or even that the world can take away, but it's actually a gift to you as a daughter or a son. Now, I want everybody right now, like, I want to just kind of clear up any misconceptions. Uh, you are not so damaged or fragile, and your past is not so messy that the grace of God can't heal you, that there's not enough mercy for every mistake. So the piece that we're talking about today, I, I want everybody to hear this. Y'all are all invited to this. Have you ever had, I, I've talked about this in the past, but have you ever had access to something that you didn't access? You know what I'm talking about? 
Like you found out later on that you had access to something. I shared this before, but I actually was reminded of it as I was kind of bringing this year in for a landing. I fly quite a bit. And uh, I was on the phone frustrated with my friend earlier on this year. And I was like, oh, I'm just sitting here on this layover in Atlanta. And he's like, why don't you just go to the Delta Sky Club? And I'm like, what do you mean? And he was like, I was like, bro, that's like $50 for each pass. I'm just not interested in paying every time I go in and out. He goes, what kind of American Express card do you have? I was like, for starters, none of your business. You want my social security number too? Like, why are we asking all these questions? And he's like, no, no, what kind of card do you have? And I told him, and he starts laughing. He's like, bro. How long have you had that card? I was like, I don't know, a couple of months. He's like, a couple of years. I was like, maybe a couple of years. I don't know, 2019. That's what it says on the card. He's like, dude, you have a pass to the Delta Sky Club anytime you want. So sure enough, walked in, bloop, bloop. They scanned the pass. They're like, Mr. Groves, your gate's C46. Enjoy croissants and lattes. I'm like, what? I had access to something that I never accessed. Y'all, there is peace that you have access to, but sometimes you disqualify yourself with your human-mindedness or toxic thinking, and you think, no, this doesn't belong to me, but it actually does. This is what Jesus says. John 14, verse 27 says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. If you're taking down notes, you can literally write this down. This is a gift. This is a gift. I do not give to you as the world gives So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus made it very crystal clear in this verse that true peace comes from him, not from the world. This isn't the kind of peace you can Google. This isn't the kind of peace that you can purchase. And this is for somebody, if if there's an area of your life that's been robbing you of your peace, then it's too expensive. He says, you can't buy this type of peace. This is a gift from God. So my son, he's 12. I've got four kids, 12, 11. Rex actually about to turn 13 New Year's Eve. Come on, that's why I'm gonna have a teenager. Ooh, hallelujah. Uh, but he was having a, a deal the other day and my wife was like, I heard her talking in the kitchen and, and my wife's brilliant. She has her master's degree in counseling. So I hear her going through all her like, well, how do you feel? Like I hear her doing all that stuff. And so I'm like, I'm staying out of that conversation. <laughs> like, and then she's like, hey, honey, I need your help. And I'm like, sure, I'm the father. So I come in, I'm like, yeah. And she's like, Brecken needs a little bit of peace in, in this scenario. I was like, okay, what's going on? And then she goes, well, I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna tell him a quick story and then I'll pull you in. I was like, okay, so I'm saying, this is a true story. She's like, honey, I'm gonna tell you a story. It's about a guy who's not quite, he's not quite as cool as you. Honestly, not even uh, as handsome as you. And Brecken goes, oh, are we talking about dad? Like, <laughs> I was like, is this? <laughs> we started laughing. I don't even remember we finished. So I had no peace after. <laughs> she was trying to break down peace. And I, anyways, the peace that the world gives, the peace that the world gives is fleeting. It's flickering. Short-lived. How many of you guys have had moments of peace? Wave at me. You're like, yeah, I've had, I've had moments of peace. Like, I've had, I've had these kind of roller coaster. Like, uh, it's it's, ooh, it's weekend. Probably got Monday. Oh, I got to start all over again. And Tuesday was not that bad. Wednesday, we're almost there. Friday, all right. Saturday, yes. Sunday, church. It's Monday again. Like, we kind of ride these roller coaster moments of short-lived, flickering, fleeting moments of peace. God never intended. For us, to, for us to live a life that's these short-lived moments of peace, like pay a little bit of debt off, got a little bit of peace. Come on, you went through Dave Ramsey's money makeover, like you feel good, <laughs> right? Like you cooked a meal, you got the kitchen all cleaned up, you get a little bit of peace, right? Like you go on vacation. Now, if you have kids, you know it's, it's all work. Like you say it's peace, but three or four days, like you tr- start to catch your breath and then you have to go back home, but you get a little bit. How many of you guys have had those moments of peace? You can say like, yeah, I remember I've had those types of, uh, uh, of peace-filled moments. There was a story I read, and uh, this dad came home, and he, dads, we have to do better. So if you're a verbal processor, I want to encourage you to think twice and speak once, uh, because the dad walked in, and he was like, what happened in here? Have we been robbed? Because the house was like all torn up. There's three kids, and the, the mom's looking, the wife's looking at him, and she goes, you can be my partner in this, and you can, be, you can fulfill your covenant, or you can be the fourth child. You choose. And he's like, I got you. I got you. But have we been robbed? Like, what's happening right now? And she said, the kids have been a lot today. And so he's like, babe, I got you. I've got your back. So he goes to the bathroom, turns on a bubble bath, turned on some music. He came in. He goes, hey, the night, you're off the clock. 
you're gonna have a night of just, just peace and, and rest and relaxation. She's like, are you kidding me? He's like, no, I'm gonna make dinner. She's like, what are you gonna make? He goes, we'll make pizza. And she was like, take the plastic wrap off the pizza. You almost burned the house down last time. He's like, I, I grew past, if you're gonna go through it, grow through it. I grew past that. I know to not do that now. And so she's like, what are you gonna do? He's like, I'm gonna make, I'll get into bed. All you have to do is literally just say, good night, children, I love you. Leave me alone and just go down the hall. And she's like, okay. And she said, I'll tell you, when I was walking down the hall, I felt like I could catch my breath for the first time in months. She's like, I was like, thank you. I needed this moment of peace. Dad lines all the kids up. Listen, we're not dealing with dishes. We're doing disposable cups and plates. We're going to eat pizza. The little girl's like, are you going to take the plastic wrap off? He's like, I don't need to hear it from you two. That's already done. It's in the oven. We're good, okay? And then y'all are not going to bother mom. You're going to go brush your teeth and go to bed. They were like, yes, sir. He's like, cool. He's like, this is not that hard. Okay, this, I don't know why she's all worked up. So, and then he got everything set up, got everything on the table, and then he got stuck watching uh, Sports Center. 20, 25 minutes passed. He looked at the table. The kid, kids, come eat. Like, pizza's ready. Gets it on the table. You guys get, okay. And then he got locked back in. Now the game started, and he's into the game. About 30 minutes passed, and he looked at the table. Y'all, these kids have eaten. They cleaned everything up. They've tucked themselves in. He's like, yeah, I did, I did pretty good. Like, she should be, like, over the top thankful, right? Like, I'm gonna, I even have time to clean up a little bit. And then he hears her yell his name, and he's like, oh, she wants to thank me. Walks in the bathroom. All three kids are sitting in the bubble bath <laughs> with their clothes on, eating pizza. And she's in the corner like this. And he's like, I didn't know you wanted all of us in here with you. Come on, dads, we can do better than that. And she said, this is the part that I love. She said, I, for a brief moment, about 15 minutes, I could catch my breath. I felt like I experienced peace. Again, how many of you guys have experienced those short-lived moments of peace? But here's the truth. God never intended for us to live a life with just moments of peace because moments of peace will get you through some seasons. But there's a different type of peace we're gonna unpack today that will get you through every season. For those of you who don't know, I started in ministry as a worship pastor. So I uh, started playing different instruments, started on drums, and then I went to keys, and I lead from guitar off and on, and, and I've, I've sang for a long time. And uh, so musically, I know some of the technicalities of, of music. I've got my friend Joe here. Give Joe a, a huge hand. Uh, so up here at this keyboard, if Joe, if Joe decides to play the keys, uh, there's this note called a staccato note. And a staccato note is a short-lived, sharp-edged, fleeting note that starts and stops. Now, there's reverberation here at West Houston. I'm sure you'll hear it at Cinco, Woodlands, and even at home. But you'll just hear a little bit of a, of a reverberation or a little bit of an echo. But you'll see very quickly how the note stop, starts and how it stops. So go ahead and... There it is. Ooh, it's very inspiring. <laughs> like, my God, I felt the presence of God right there. I don't even know what just happened. I can't remember. No, play it again. This is literally how a lot of us live our lives. Like, I've got a little bit of peace in my marriage. Whew, okay, we're good. Uh, my kids haven't lost it this week. We're pretty, we're pretty, we're pretty good. Okay, my, my money, like some things, that I got a Christmas bonus. My money's not quite as funny, so I got a little, got a little bit of peace. So we have uh, Christmas coming. Whew, I gotta catch my breath here. We have lots of family coming, but some of them called and canceled, so they're not coming now. I got a little bit... Got a little bit more peace. It just, it, someone almost ran around the room. You're like, that was a whole rhema word for me. But we live our lives like this. And God never intended for us to live like this. Short-lived, flickering, fleeting. Because what ends up happening is you also have a roller coaster of joy. It, it, it robs you of your confidence. It messes and muddies the waters of your clarity and your wisdom and the things that God wants you to operate in and function in in your purpose because I'm constantly dealing with highs and lows and moments of peace. But behind this keyboard, and our team is so intentional about putting things so polished in a way, but there's this pedal back here. And if you're a musician, you know what I'm talking about. It's called a sustain pedal. And I do this illustration every year, so maybe you've seen me do this before, but there's a sustain pedal. And if Joe plays the exact same note while pressing his foot on that pedal, it sounds like this. Just carries out. Hit, hit it one more time. Like it shifts a room. 
it feels like it just continues on. Play it again. So when the doctor says you're gonna deal with this the rest of your life, it's not a short-lived flickering moment of peace. You say, I've already prayed through on this. The great physician already says I'm healed and I appreciate your professionalism, but there's a thread of sustained peace that's running through my life. I understand that this job is on the edge and I may get laid off, but I trust that my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Philippians chapter four, verse 19. If you back up to verse 13, I have all that I need and I have all the strength I need that comes from him. There's a thread of peace. These temporary moments of peace will get you through some seasons, sustained peace. That gift from Jesus, John 14, will get you through every season. And then there's this confidence and boldness that comes over you that you can't help but worship. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Cause you have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. There's this peace that runs through every area of your life. You can't help but turn your worry into worship. You can't help but recognize that your praise is a weapon. So God, today with our hands lifted towards you, I thank you that there is a thread of peace that we have access to, that we're accessing today, that sustains us, that gets us through every valley moment, celebrates mountaintop moments, that's with us before, the middle of, and after the storm. We trust you in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give God praise. Uh, that worship moment was for me. I forgot y'all were in the room, amen. If you're taking down notes, you can write this down. Give it up for Joe, too. Thanks, Joe, man. I appreciate you, buddy. God intended for us, if you're taking down notes, write this down. God intended for us, you can make it personal. God intended for me to live a life, or us to live a life of sustained Peace, again, temporary moments of peace will get you through some seasons, but sustained peace will get you through even the hardest seasons. This type of peace, again, only comes from Jesus. This type of peace will help you navigate life. It'll also help protect your heart so that you can live out life with a sound mind as well. Philippians chapter four, verse seven, this is huge. Then you will experience God's peace. This is that sustained peace we're talking about, which exceeds anything that you can understand. His peace, that's from him, will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I feel like the enemy has been working overtime on trying to rob us of our peace. How many of you guys feel like that? And the enemy knows he can't take you out, so he's gonna try to wear you out. And he's gonna try to mess with your peace and muddy the waters of your joy. And I believe as we close out 2021 and we go into 2022, I pray that you would lean in and receive this, this type of sustained peace that God wants to give us. Here's the truth. Jesus talks about storms and trials and issues we're gonna face. We reference this a lot. Like we're a positive church, we're a faith-filled, spirit-filled church, but we're also gonna let you know, hey, we're gonna go through some things. How many of y'all have gone through some stuff? Come on, wave at me. There's a guy in the back, literally with two hands and a foot lifted. He's like, if I can get all. <laughs> Jesus himself talks about how this will mess with your peace but to take heart, watch this, John 16, 33, Jesus' words, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. That's that peace we're talking about, that sustained peace. Because in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I love that, be of good courage, for I have overcome the world. Again, this type of sustained peace from God is the calm, not only after the storm, trial, or situation, or season, but it's the presence of his spirit in the middle of the storm. One of my favorite stories is in Matthew. Jesus had been ministering to the people and after feeding over 5,000, he sent the disciples to go to the boat, to go to the other side, and then he went up to the mountain alone to pray. And we're gonna pick this up in Matthew 14, 
Verse 24 through 27, watch this. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. 25 of Matthew 14 says, about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus, I love this, came towards them walking on the water. Like, can you imagine like Jesus is just like eight? Like he's just walking towards them. Verse 26, watch this. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified and in fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. Well, watch, what's ha- watch what happens in 27. But Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid. This part right here, I'm telling you, it unlocks so much peace in me. The other day when I was rereading through it, he said, take courage. Why? Because I am here. I hope that grabs you like it did me. I love the line, I am here, because this is the sustained peace we've been talking about. It's an audacious, faith-filled confidence in God that before the storm, again, in the middle of the storm, and after the storm, he is here. You're not alone. He's never left you or ran out on you. He said he'd never forsake you. He's in the middle of it with you, and he's fighting for you. The answer always begins with, and always ends with Jesus. Can somebody give God praise? I'm telling you right now. It's a peace that will sustain you. Close your eyes for a moment. I wanna pray this prayer over you. I was praying and I was writing down some notes last night and I just really felt, I I believe in the declaration and the authority of the believer. The Bible says in James 4, 7 that we have the authority to resist the enemy and he will flee. But one of my favorite verses is in Job 22, 28. It says, I'll decree a thing and it shall be established. With your eyes closed across all of our locations for a moment, this is my prayer for you today that Jesus that you would meet us today. You are the one that restores broken hearts. You restore broken relationships and broken dreams. God, I thank you that you're the peace in the middle of an addiction, that you're the peace in the middle of a broken marriage or family. You're the peace in the middle of a diagnosis that seems hopeless. You're the peace in the middle of a financial crisis. God, our prayer and our hope for the holidays as a church is that we would receive breakthrough that we would receive deliverance this holiday season, that we would receive our miracle, the very thing we've been believing you most for. God, I pray, God, that there would be restoration and miracles, God, in marriages, areas that feel like they're falling apart in families will begin to fall into place. God, I pray that today we would receive that sustained peace that gets us through any situation, every storm and every obstacle we face. We lean into your presence today and we lean on your promises because we know they don't break when we lean on them. We trust you even when we can't track you because you've been better than good to us. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Now give God praise because he really is your restorer, your refuge and your strength. All right, if you're taking down notes, we always encourage you to. If you're taking down notes, you've heard me say this a thousand times if you've been to Hope City. Harvard did a study. Not Harvard, but Harvard Community College. I don't even think they spell it the same. (laughs) But they say if you're a hearer only, you retain 5% of what you hear. That's not a lot. So right now you're like, this is a good message. I I remember the sustained peace deal. That was cool. 5%. If you take down notes, 35% retention rate in real time. 90 to 95% retention rate if you take down notes and go back and apply it. I want you to write these three points down, three foundational ways to live a life of sustained peace. Number one, if you're taking down notes, write this down. Walking in faith, it's on the screens, is the path... To peace. Walking in faith is the path to peace. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The importance of walking in faith is understanding that faith is a journey and faith and trust actually run parallel. So when we trust God and we walk in faith, it's our love response to the one who loves us. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six, one of Pastor Jeremy's favorite verses, he references this a lot, we reference this verse a lot. I love this verse, watch this. It says, trust in the Lord with a little bit of your heart. It doesn't say that. Come on, I need some crowd participation. Trust in the Lord with? That was was decent. That was decent for a sleepy crowd. I'm gonna need a little bit more crowd participation. Come on, trust in the Lord with? All. All of your heart. And this is where it gets tough in our humanity. And lean not, ooh, this is tough, on your own understanding. But acknowledge him in all your ways. 
and he will make your path straight. See, we find sustained peace when we walk in faith because faith, again, requires us to relinquish control. Release the burden, place our confidence and expectation in Christ, not ourselves. And then this is awesome. This should be freeing for somebody. The pressure is off of our shoulders when we realize that we can't fix, restore, deliver, perfect ourselves, or even level up. Only God can do this. So again, to live in this type of peace, this sustained peace, and to really walk in it is to walk in faith. One of my favorite verses on faith, it's simple and it's short, but it's powerful. Isaiah 26, 3, the Lord gives perfect peace to those whose faith is firm. What's your foundation look like? That's why you're gonna hear all the time here at Hope City, we're a next steps church. We tell you all the time, it's God's job to change you, but it is our job to walk with you. So what does your foundation look like? That's why we encourage you, do the first 15 every day. Take the first five minutes in the word, five minutes in worship, five minutes in, in, in prayer every day. And then at 15, you'll say, I'm hungry, I need 30. And then I need 45 minutes. And then an hour's not enough. Because the truth is, your foundation is everything. This building we're sitting in, the home you're watching from, Cinco and the Woodlands, the building, like we look around and we see all of this, but the walls and the structure is only as strong as the foundation it's been built upon. So what does your faith look like? Because if you feel like there's an area of your life that feels hopeless, then it's been under the influence of a lie. And hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. And he does want to unlock supernatural, sustained peace in your life. If you believe that, say amen. All right, taking down notes number two, pursuing connection, this is huge, paves the way for peace. Pursuing connection paves the way for peace. You have to connect on purpose. We are a church that believes that life moves at the speed of relationships. I've loved this quote. I've quoted it so many times this year. If you wanna go somewhere fast, then go alone, right? You can go somewhere way quicker. But if you wanna go somewhere far, go together. You have to choose connection. How many guys are a part of our connect groups? Come on, we talked about this earlier. Amazing, we're actually relaunching our next semester at the end of January. So if you have not been a part of a connect group before, jump in. Maybe God's been stirring in you to, to, to host one or be a leader of a connect group. My wife and I do a marriage one. We absolutely love it. Every Wednesday night, man, we get fired up. It's time for our marriage group. And, and our church is large enough to serve a city and a community and reach the world, but our connect groups make it small enough to know each other. And so we have to pursue connection. How many guys, again, were part of our freedom groups? So those launch again at the end of next month as well. I have an amazing testimony. I wanted to read this from a participant that flew in that was a part of our freedom conference here last weekend. Showed up, man, we had an amazing time at the Woodlands. God showed up, Hope City worship led. So many people left set free, healed, and delivered. And this is just one of many testimonies. This lady said, I had rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis. I've been in pain all day and every day. Friday and Saturday morning specifically, I took some medicine and typically it kicks in in about 30 minutes, but for some reason it didn't work. But towards the end of the conference, Pastor Daniel, uh, that's me. <laughs> just say, yes, like, who? And I don't go by Pastor Daniel, just Daniel Spine or the Bearded Wonder, but not the Balded Wonder. My wife, <laughs> she said that one week, that hurt a little bit. All right. She said, when Pastor Daniel said, there are people here who suffer with arthritis. So let me, let me unpack this. So some of you are like, what happened? We were in the middle of our worship moment and we were flowing and I felt like the Lord just stirred in me. And I'm not a psychic, I'm not a fortune teller, but the Lord will speak prophetically in worship moments. And I felt the Lord say he was healing someone who is dealing with arthritic issues and joint issues and pain. So we were just flowing. And again, this isn't hyper charismatic. There was nothing weird about this. The Holy Spirit was moving in the room. The power of God was present. And so she said, when he began to say, talk about arthritis and no cartilage in knees, she said, I knew he was speaking to me. And once he prayed, all of a sudden, all my pain was completely and totally gone. And it has been gone ever since that night. And I am now able again to get on my knees and pray to my God, which I have not been able to do in years. Come on, somebody. Miracles are breaking out. Connect groups are breaking, miracles are breaking out of connect groups in our church. God is showing up and he's doing what he does. He's healing and he's restoring. The truth is a lot of times our peace is directly connected to a relationship. 
It's directly connected to an iron sharpening iron moment. The Bible says in Psalms or in Proverbs 27, 17, watch this. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter four, one of my favorite verses, this is amazing, verses nine through 12, Ecclesiastes chapter four, watch this, verse 10, two can accomplish more than twice as much as one for the results can be much better, but if one falls, the other pulls him up. But if one man falls when he's alone, what happens? He's in trouble. Goes on in verse 11, also on a cold night, two under the same blanket gain warmth. Okay, pause real quick, because I don't need anybody to be like, no, I showed up and I heard the only way to get peace is to cuddle. We're not gonna talk about that. (laughs) <laughs> That's the relationship series. We're gonna skip verse 11. I'll let Pastor Jeremy break that one down. Verse 12, and one standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three is even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. The truth is we need each other. You want to sustain peace in your life? Pursue connection. Look at the person next to you and say, you got a friend in me. Come on, say it. This isn't gonna be on the screens, but another, another way to unlock peace in your life. I'm reminded of Jesus' words in Acts 20, verse 35. He said, it is better to give than it is to receive. And during this holiday season, we teach our kids and we talk to our kids a lot. Man, it's always nice to get something, right? Like, ooh, I got this gift. I like, is this suede? I don't know, it's fancy. Like, it's always nice to get a gift, right? But something happens in you when you sow when you begin to give, it unlocks a sustained peace in you. And we're teaching our kids this. Our church is a product of this. Let me just say this on behalf of our pastors. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for sowing radically into Hope City missions. You know, locally and globally, we've been able to give over $8 million away because of your generosity. Come on, somebody should shout. That's a big deal. At 10 in Beltway 8, we're, go- we're about to take a building vertical that's going to house and host and love on and reach thousands of people because of your generosity. So thank you for the way you give. And I'm telling you, your giving and your peace is, is directly connected. We had one of our legacy givers call and said, hey, I just, man, I love giving. It just, give, it just gives me so much peace. And he said, I wanna sow, my wife and I wanna sow $1,000 each to 20 individual single moms and dads across your, your campuses. So our team identified 20 individuals and this person and his wife, they sold $20,000 so that we could bless a single mom and dad with $1,000 to go and buy Christmas gifts for their kids. Come on, this is what heaven looks like when it touches earth and peace is released and hope is found. But I'm telling you, when our kids see it, my son said to me yesterday, he said, it just feels so much better to give he said, I really don't want you guys to give, give us much gifts for Christmas this year. I said, awesome, we'll give all your stuff away. And he's like, well, I didn't say, I didn't say that. I just <laughs> didn't say that. All right, number three, if you're taking down notes, write this last one down, heavenly perspective. This is gonna help somebody. Heavenly perspective produces peace. I, I've used this illustration before, but I think it's a great reminder as we close out 21 and we enter into 2022. God never intended for us to live a life this self-consumed. It's really easy to get caught in the me, myself, and I trap. And then comparison gets in the way, and comparison's the thief of joy. But everything is polished. Everything is filtered. Everything is hashtag marriage goals. And God's like, hey, I can't bless, heal, fix, restore, or use who you're pretending to be. So take off the mask, take off the facades, take off the filters, take the attention off yourself. But the truth is, it's really difficult when you're hearing us talk about the silos and you're hearing us declare that Hope City Missions is feeding thousands of families weekly. You're like, that's pretty amazing, but I can't give to that because I may not have enough for myself. I'd love to serve at that, but I I don't know that I I can make room in my schedule. And the truth is, if I'm so consumed here, I can't see you. So how am I ever supposed to serve so or allow God to unlock the purpose in my life and have a heavenly perspective? You wanna rob peace in your life? You wanna remove peace from your life? You wanna keep riding the wave of temporary moments of peace and stay right here? And I know that's super harsh sounding, but God never intended for us to stay here. I believe God is asking us to have a heavenly perspective, to start looking at life from a different angle. Because when I look at it from a different angle, hey, I see her and I see them, 
Pastor Jeremy, you want us to sow and serve and, 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 and jump into that project? Absolutely. How, how can I be a part? You, I want to pledge towards the silos. I want to give towards that goal. I want to be a part of that. I'll take four hand claps. That's good. That's all I needed. It's really easy, specifically during this time, to stay stuck here. And I believe God's trying to get our attention today. Close your eyes for a minute. Start looking from a different angle. Stop looking at people and judging them based upon the chapter of their life that you walked in on. Start looking at them through the filter of compassion instead of the filter of only what you see. Father, forgive us for getting caught up in the me, myself, and I trap. Forgive us, God, for getting caught up in robbing ourselves and ripping ourselves off of this incredible sustaining peace that you've given us as a gift. Father, today I pray for our incredible church family. I pray, God, and thank you for the generosity. God, I thank you for Mark 12, verse 30, 31. It says that we must love you, God, with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind and our strength. The second is equally as important. We have to love our neighbor as ourself. Look at me real quick. The only way that you can really receive that love yourself is to get out of the way. You posture yourself and position yourself to receive that love, and then after you've received that love, after you've received that love, out of the overflow of the love you've received, I can love you. How am I supposed to love my neighbor? I don't even like my neighbor. How am I supposed to love my... You receive that love, that unconditional, unfailing that grace for every goof up, that mercy for every mistake, unconditional daddy to a daughter, father to a son, relentless love that said, I saw you in your lowest and I still was right there. I'll pull you up out of the lowest place. So receive that love and then love others. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 11, dear friends, as us, since God loved us this much, we must love each other. One of my favorite verses, and I believe our church is a true representative of this. Now, we're all a work in progress because we're human, we're fallible. But this is the verse that we're striving to be more and more every day, Colossians 3, 17. Look at this, whatever you do and whatever you say, you do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. So everything I say, do, everywhere I go, how I lead, how I'm a husband, how I'm a dad, I wanna do it as a representative of Jesus. It's difficult if all I'm seeing is myself. But when I fix my eyes on Jesus and I start looking at him and him as the way maker, the promise keeper, there's a piece that unlocks in me that I can't help but contend. I can't, can, I can't, I almost lost the mirror. And then all you, if you break the mirror, that's bad luck. Take it easy. <laughs> but the truth is when you've received that sustaining supernatural peace, it's contagious. And you can't help but tell other people about Jesus and who he is and who he has been in you. Let me pray this prayer over you as we bring this in for a landing. Close your eyes just for a moment. God, even when life feels chaotic, I thank you that we can experience your peace because of what Jesus did on the cross. Thank you for making this possible by sending us your one and only son. You made a way for us to know you and to experience you more. Even when life feels out of control, we can cling to the truth that your peace isn't based on our feelings or circumstances, but on your character and your faithfulness. When I don't feel and we don't feel at peace, please make your presence so known to us and remind us that you're in control. Give us strength and comfort when the world feels uncertain and unsafe. Protect our hearts and minds from the weight of feelings and thoughts that feel overwhelming. Allow us to sense your presence every day and to live with confidence that you are always right here and you're always right there. One whisper of your name, you're right there and we can feel you near. Let our lives be an example of that peace that truly surpasses all understanding. With your eyes closed just for a moment, if you're here today, you're at Cinco or Woodlands or you're watching online, you say, Daniel, the truth is, I don't know Jesus as my savior. The foundation of everything we've been talking about, the firm foundation of our faith is built on one person and his name is Jesus. If you've never experienced sustained peace in your life, supernatural peace in your life, that gift that Jesus talked about in John 14, it's all found in the presence of Jesus. 
Maybe you're here and you say, Daniel, I, I don't know him, so I don't know his peace. Or maybe you're here and you say, Daniel, the truth is, I, I used to walk with him, but I fell away. And today's the day I wanna rededicate my life. I wanna make things right with him today. And for, I wanna ask for forgiveness. I've been living pretty messy, but today's the day that I wanna make things right. I'm gonna count to three, and at Cinco at Woodlands, our team there is gonna be looking here at West Houston. As family, we're gonna be doing this together, and if you're watching online, you can type yes to Jesus. Our team's gonna help you. When I hit three, I want you to lift up your hand. Today's my day to give my life to Jesus or rededicate my life today. Again, here at Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons, but according to Romans 10, verse nine and 10, when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. He's about to change a lot of families He's about to rewrite some stories. A lot of things run in our families, a lot of addictions and struggles, but the enemy didn't know that when it ran into you, it was gonna be broken off because when you confess the name of Jesus, everything will change. One, Daniel, I wanna give my life to God. Two, I wanna rededicate my life. Three, you're talking about me. Lift up your hand if that's you. Hand, hand, hand. Hands are literally going up all over West Houston. Our team at Cinco, I know in Woodlands are watching too. Yes, in the chat. Right now, hands are going up all over there. Come on, Hope City, can we give everybody a hand who lifted up their hand today with boldness? Amazing. All right, this is what I want you to do. I want you, everybody to pray this prayer from our team to watching online at all of our locations. Say this out loud. And if you lifted up your hand for the first time or rededicating this, I'm telling you, your story's about to change. Pray this prayer with boldness and confidence and joy today. Say, Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me and it's not working. From today on, I choose to live for you. I believe in my heart that you're the son of God that you died on the cross so that I could have life and life more abundantly. Thank you for forgiving me of all my struggles and all my sins and all my issues. I repent now. From this moment on, you are my Father, you are my Savior, and you are my Lord. Thank you for unlocking sustained peace in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, let's give God praise. Let's go.